Okay, ready? We'll start. Kumlan and Ablat Gemara, we are up to the Chaf Amid Aleph, and we are up to the, the, the two dots. Actually, we went beyond that, but basically, the last thing we learned was if you could make it conditional, that you're making, setting aside a tida, but you want to use, um, you know, Michael Shane money, or you want to use something that you already have uh, on, you want to use it for, let's say, um, economic gig and all that, you cannot do do that. <clears throat> okay. Then we brought the story. And Marema said halach on his own, not like the shlokish asabiechen, and we concluded that that's the correct way of learning, where the shlokish asabiechen. I'll be up to now by eight, uh, ten lines on top of the page. In our Mishnah, we had an argument. Beishamai says that a korban shlomim you can bring on Yom Tov because you're going to eat from it. And we're talking about, um, as we'll see, we're talking about chalmei chagiga, the shlomim that you have to bring, but you don't do smich on it. We learned because smicha, you have to put pressure on the animal and it's mukta, and you shouldn't do that on Yom Tif. But he said you cannot bring the carbon oilers because you're not eating from it, so you cannot bring even those oilers that are mandatory. <clears throat> and uh, Basil says you can bring a carbon shlamim and you can bring um, oilers, as we'll, we said, and we'll say it now, because the positive uh, la Hashem, and anything that belongs to Hashem, you can do. <clears throat> and we had two versions when it says over here, Shaul is say when it says over here, Shlomim means only the Shlomim that are mandatory on Yamtip, but in the Dorim and the Dove is voluntary Kabbalanis. You can wait until Chalamoid before you bring it to after Yamtip. And then we had another Tana who said that uh, that you can. Um, that, that we had, um, sorry, we had a Shim, um, uh, what do you call it? We had a Shimon Lazar says that you can. That all shlamim we can. <clears throat> or, for example, because since a hill holds, you can eat from it, it's good enough. doesn't matter if it's yamtiv or not. Okay, so now we're going to explain what's going on here, what the whole argument is. Tani, Tani, Kamele, Yitzchavad Abba, this time the Lord before the Yitzchavad Abba, it says in Pasek, Yakrev Esa Eulah, they brought up the Eulah, it's talking about the Shivas Mamalui, and on the eighth day, they brought up the Eulah, and this was a mandatory Eulah, and it says, Vayaseo Kamishpa, and they did it the way you're supposed to do it. <clears throat> now, what do you mean, Yasel Kamish? Which way are you supposed to do it? What did he say by an other? You know, had to do that they did it. So it must be because the only laws that we have in Vayikra or in the beginning of Vayikra is about an Euler, which is a voluntary Euler. And there, there are a number of laws. And it says over here by the Maluim, by the mandatory Euler, he followed the voluntary Euler laws. So whatever laws apply to voluntary Euler and Shlomim, which is the beginning of Vayikra, apply also to this Euler Chayla. Um, um, and there it says that you have to have smichas, so you have to have smichas as well. So it says about Yaakov, so Eilu Yasek Mishpah, Ke Mishpat Eilus Nadava, that the laws of this Eilus Chayva have the same laws as the Eilus Nadava. What does that come to teach you? Limad al Eilus, or Lomad al Eilus Chayva, come to teach you that Eilus Chayva, so including also by Yom Tov. You have an Eilus Ria, which is a mandatory Eilus, Chetu'un Smicha, that an Eilus Chayva requires Smicha. That's what we learned from there. But we need a special, it seems to me, you need a special pasik for an oilus chayvu. For example, in the beginning of Yamtiv, everyone has to bring a carbon oiler, carbon oilus ria, that this carbon needs smich. We learn from a special pasik of Kamishpat that what? We learn from oilus and dabba. Says the Gemara, why do you need a special pasik for oilus chayvu that needs smich? Omale dom lochmani, who must be the author of this brais? It must be Beshamai, he must be Beshamai, the loy gamri shalme, chayva mishalme, the dove. Since Beshamai does not compare, as we'll soon see, uh, shlomim, which is a chayv, which is, for example, the chagiga, which is a chayv, from the shlomim, which is voluntary, which is the beginning by Yikra. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Because he says you don't need smicha, yet we know that shlomim a karm shlom, a voluntary karm shlom does need smicha. And yet Chagiga doesn't, so he doesn't compare shalme chayva to shalme nadava. So therefore he wouldn't compare oilas chayva to oilas nadava either. So you need a special posse to tell you, Kam Mishpat, that an oilas chayva has the same rules as an oilas nadava and that you could require smicha. Because he basil, because if you can tell me he's basil, um, um, then Kivan since. 
the gamri shal mechayiv mashal dovel. So this basically holds that shal mechayiv requires smicha. So he does equate the two. He holds a chagig is just like karm shlami, a mandatory, just like a voluntary. So oila the same thing. So too an oila mandatory oila would be just like a voluntary oila. You would need smicha. I don't need a special pasuk for it. Oila chayiv and amilot de boykra. You don't need a pasuk. The gamri oila dovel will equate the two. So if you need a special pasuk about oila chayiv, you need smicha. It must be beishamay not beishil. Says him who says umemay. How do you know the base hill? Shall me chayve me shall me dava gumri. How do you know that you you said because shall me chayve requires smicha? You assume because we are learning shall me chayve for shall me dava. No, maybe even hills might you cannot learn shall me chayve for shall me dava. So how does hill know that shall me chayve require uh, smicha? Dilma ma oilas chayve gumri. Maybe he learns it from oilas chayve. Once we've established. From this pasuk, I mean, he'll maybe will agree with this pasuk that oilas chayva requires smicha. That's how he knows that shalme chayva requires smicha, not because he's learning from shalme in a double. And why would I say that? But oilas chayva gufa boykra. Oilas chayva is a pasuk. Now, look, what's the what's pshat? Why would you rather learn? Why would he learn that a carbon chagig and it's smicha from a carbon elusria rather than from a carbon shlamim, which is similar? Maishna mishalmin adover. You know why? Because it's different than an ordinary shlamim, which is a voluntary. The like gamri, he doesn't want to learn from it. If you, if you might ask a question, if there's a good reason why you cannot compare shalmei chayva to shalmei adover, there's also a valid reason that you cannot compare shalmei chayva to elus chayva. So if you cannot learn from one, you can learn from another. So how can it be basil? And why not? Why won't you? Why do you think you're trying to ask me that maybe we don't learn shalmei chayma for shalmei dava? Why? Why the different? She came at suya and shalmei nadava is year round. Whenever you move to uh, donate a carbon, do it. Chagiga is only on so you can't learn chagiga from shlam if that's the reason. Neither can you learn a karma chagiga from karma elusria. Why not? She can't call the elusria gets entirely burnt on the base on the mizbech. A whole different carbon. So maybe there you need smicha. Who says that a, a, a shalme chayva requires smicha? Says the Gemara, you're right. No. Beis Hill actually needs the Pasek as well to tell you that an Eulah Sri and Eulah Shaiva requires smicha. And once we've established that an Eulah Shaiva requires smicha, so we know two dinim now. We know that a, a, a voluntary carbon shlamim requires smicha, leaning on it. And we know that an Eulah Shaiva, the mandatory one for Yantif, needs smicha. Now that we know both of them need smicha, it also tells us that those particular reasons that are that are um, relevant to each one of these cases, the uniqueness of it is not what causes it to have smicha. You're going to tell me that Shalmei Nadova is common. That's why you need smicha. Oilus Chayva is not common. It's only Yom Tov. Yet you need smicha. So obviously the fact that it's common means nothing. I you tell me Oilus Chayva get totally burned with Zbech, but Shalmei Nadova doesn't get burned with Zbech. Yet you need smicha. So we see that the, either factor has no impact and plays no role in it. So what is it? Why is it Shalmei Chayva? Why is it the way it is? Purely because once we've established, we have a, what's the common denominator? A carbon requires smicha. And that's what we learned from here. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so the What's the common denominator between the oilas chayve and the shalmin the dove? The common denominator is both a private carbon, a personal carbon. It's not a carbon tiber because carbon doesn't need to be. It's not a carbon. It's a private carbon, and they both require nesachim libation. So therefore, they both require smicha. And this says the gemara vaitis. So it could be basil as well. Says the gemara the savri beishamet. You're telling me your premises that Bisham may hold shall may chayva loy by yismicha that a carbon chagiga does not require smicha. But what Tanya we learned, and 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 that's what he says that what Tanya didn't we learn? Amar Rabbi Yehuda said, "Elo nech lugo Bisham may betzil al smicha atzma Bisham." Because in our mission it said Bisham may said you bring the carbon chagiga on Yantu because you can eat from it, but there's no smicha. So you you took it literally. He holds there's no smicha. But we learned Rabbi Yehuda said they're not arguing about smicha itself. So they all agree you need smicha. The difference is how close it has to be to the actual shechita. Aman nechelko al takeif lismicha shechita. How close does it have to be the smicha to the shechting? Beshamai says ain't it tzadik. So you do the smicha before yamtiv and the shechting of the karma chigig on yamtiv. So he says that you don't do smicha. Not you don't do it at all. You don't do it on yamtiv. You do it before yamtiv. And Beisil and Beisil said tzadikhu. Beisil says it has to be close proximity. So therefore, since you allowed a shech, surely you allowed to do the smicha, which is only the rabbanon. Surely you can do it on yamtiv. 
says, you're right, that's what this Brysa says, but that's not how we learn our Mishnah. Because he learns like the following Brysa, and that's how he ends with the Mishnah. It's literally, there's no smicha. There's no argument about the proximity. Wherever you need smicha, it has to be close. Whether you need smicha on a chagiga of a chayva. Knows by a shlami, which is voluntary, needs smicha. Everyone agrees it has to be done as, uh, an instant before you do the shrita. They're arguing whether a karma chagiga, a mandatory karma chagiga, requires smicha at all. But shami aimim ain't so you don't need it at all, like our mission if you take it literally. And we still aim it, so we still say you do need it. Tarabam, we learned an interesting story. Mai said there was a story, Behilul Hazokin. There's a story with Hilul himself. Shahavi Oilosay La Azora. Remember the hill holds, you bring an oil of Surya on Yom Tov, and Bishama says you don't, because you cannot eat from it. And there it says, V'chagoyis, only Chagiga. And Hillel says, L'Hashem, anything which is Hashem you can bring, including a carbon oil, even though nobody eats from it. So once Hillel Hazaka himself brought an oil to the Azara, and remember, Hillel Hazaka was a Nasi, to go ahead and to do, and he was going to do smicha on Yom Tov as well. And obviously, bring the carbon. Tamide Shama Hazaka, so Chabro all of Tamid Shavazakin, the student Shavazakin, we learned already a few places that were very sharp. Turn to Hilla Zakin, Omul, and they said, Ma Tiva Shabahim was what's going on over here. They were going to stop from bringing magic. This is the Nasi B Israel, and the Tamid of Shammai were going to stop Hill from bringing a carbon rear on on Yom Tov. Omul Ahem, so Hilo, Hill didn't want to start a fight. Rashi says, because of his Anivas, he didn't want to. Uh, have a debate with them. I'm not sure. Rashid, who was that Nevis? He decided to change Mipnei Shalom. They don't have a fight. Is that an Inyav Nevis or just uh, smart that you don't want to have a fight? But anyway, Rashid, because of his Nevis, he decided not to have a fight. Um, so he said to them, the KV, it's a female. Now, Oila has to be a male, a Zohar. An oil is uh, rear. So he says a female. So obviously he couldn't. Uh, and he lied to them. And he said, here he clearly lied to avoid a machlekes. He didn't bend the truth. He lied. And he said, I'm bringing this for a karm shlamim, karm chagiga, which they also agreed he lied to. Kish lehem And he hit there with a tail there that uh, they should. So he moved around the tail and should think that the, that you know covered over the, the male parts. So they should think it's a female. Um, so the whole chulahem. Okay, they walked away. They didn't start any fight because he did no problem. He walked away. Um, that day, Govra Yodam Shal Beisham Beisil. On that particular day, there were more members of Beisham and the Beisil, so it was stronger. A big Shulikvay Alach Kamei. So they did read, but they did read in Erevin as well. They wanted to do the same thing again. They wanted to to uh, have a, a, a vote, and uh, they were more. They were stronger then, and they were uh, and they were intimidating. And they would, and they were sure that people would agree with them, and they would win the vote. That you cannot bring an oil city to the base of there was one old man from Tamide Shamazokin, who Baba Ben Butushmoy. The Gemara said that Baba Ben Butu was the one who saved Kal Yisrael because he was the one, more of a will learn, he was the one that Hurdus killed everybody out and he sat there and he gave smicha to all these rabbis out in the wilderness. And then they all disappeared, they all ran away to different parts and they they would continued smicha, continued the real smicha and continued, you know, Kaddish um, and all that. Then later he was tortured for this. Uh, and even though he was a student of Shammai, he obviously, his character was very different than most of the students of Shammai. He's much more uh, obliging. And Hayyadeh, he knew the halach is kebesil. He knew that the halach is like besil. We had that Basco, we learned more Erwin, that said halach besil. So what he did was, with Shalach, he sent the heavy cold sign, Kedosh Yerushalayim, and he had all the best sheep of Yerushalayim. The Hamidun Bazar, he brought them not into the Azar itself, but right next to the base of Megish and the Harabais. But Amr, he made a declaration. Call me Sharaita Lismat Yoba Bisma. Anybody wants to bring a carbon oil, come ahead and do the smicha and go bring your carbon oil. This way he he somehow or another he prevented the Kamid of Shamai from taking control. But all you say, and due to him, Gavra Yodan Shall Basil. Due to him, the, the, the number swelled. And they all, people excited to take this carbon. These are the best carbon animals. And so therefore, Hill had the numbers. And Shammai students don't have the numbers. Um, the Kabu Halacha Commission. And they established the Halacha like this hill. The Loi Hoya Sham Odom Sheedid Bedabra Klum. And after this event, nobody ever complained again. Interesting story. 
Shuv Meisad, and again, another story, the Talmud, Echad Med Talmud of Hill, there's a story, one student from the Talmud of Hill, Shehevi Oilose Azara. he brought his carbon oil to the Azara, Lisma Chola, to bring it under the like Hill says. Motsu Tamid Echad Tamid Beshamai, one of the students of Shammai saw this, they were found him, sorry, Tamid Echad Tamid Beshamai, Amrle Mazu Smicha, what are you, three words, Mazu Smicha, what are you doing, is Smicha an oil, who brings an oil on Yom Tif, because he was a student of Shammai, Amrle Mazu Shtika, you know what silence means, be quiet, three words again, Shoshke Ben Azifa, he just, he shot, he silenced that person with that, this, with that comment, that disparaging line, the halach line walked away. Omar Abayi Abayi says, Hilchach Vifo, we learn from the story, Hayit Surman Abana, if you're a Tamil Chacham, the Omar Lechavri Milsa, if somebody says to you a derogatory term, you should answer back, but don't answer more than what he originally said. Don't say more than what he originally said. What are the guys taunting with? What are you doing in the smicha? As if to say, what were you, you doing on Yamta? The only answer was, you know what quiet is? Be quiet. So, in other words, I'm teaching you two things here. First of all, you should answer back to defend yourself. You don't have to be pushed around, number one. On the other hand, don't start, don't um, you know, expand the fight. Just be exactly tit for tat. Exactly what he said, respond. <clears> Tanya, <throat> the so the argument of Basil Bashamai, whether you can bring the carbon oil or not, goes on as follows. Omrulehem Basil Bashamai, Basil Bashamai. Ma bimokum sha'asil hedin on Shabbos. We're not allowed to bring any kabbalas for our personal use on Shabbos. The only kabbalas you bring on Shabbos is, is a public kabbalah, the communal kabbalas, which are for the Abish, the carbon tummy, the carbon musaf. She also had you not bring anything for yourself. And yet, and yet you still bring all the communal kabbalas, which are for the Abish. So, Mokam Shemukla Yamta, which is much more relaxed. On Yamta, we can bring the karma chagiga and so on, which we need for eating. And a bechlam. That you know, who lavadi yasl can do all things for eating. Surely we should be able to bring the kabbanis that are due to the Abishta. Even the oil of three, not a personal carbon, it's for the Abishta. If it's good for me, for me, how can that be good for the Abishta? Omrul Hembesh, Hembesh, Hembesh says back to what are you talking about? I'll prove it to you. If you have a voluntary carbon in the Dorin Dover, which you're allowed to eat, yet you're not allowed to bring it on Yom Tov on the Mizbech, even though it's permitted to head it, not allowed to. And you yourself agree that you're not allowed to bring, according to ver one version we just spoke about before, but still also agrees you cannot bring the daughter of the Dabas because it's voluntary way to Chalamite. The other version says you're allowed to, but one version says you can. So in this version, you agree you cannot bring the daughter of the Dabas, so therefore your whole Kawachayim is undermined. Even though it's for you, you're allowed to eat a yom, you're not bringing Kabbalah. So too, your other Kabbalah is not allowed to bring. Um, yet you're not allowed to um, do it for the Abish. Um, you're allowed to cook for yourself, but you can't put it on the back. So, 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 what are you talking about? You can't prove that ain't cool as man. Why bring it on Yantu when there's no need for it? You have to bring it on Yantu, so you should allow it. This is not a fixed time. It doesn't have to be the first day Yom Tov. Not, didn't we learn If you didn't bring the first day Yom Tov, you have the entire Yom Tov to make it up. The Yom Tov, so therefore, so therefore, it doesn't have to be the first day. Just like the Dara Dabas, you can see that you don't bring it. If you don't have to, you don't bring it either. Mishil says, no, this still has a fixed time, even though it might okay, a larger window, but it's still a fixed time. Now we learn, if Yom Tov goes by, the entire Yom Tov, and you didn't bring the carbon, it's too late, you forfeited the opportunity, so it's a fixed time. Omrulem Bisham, Bisham, argument number two. Like Vanema, it says in the Pasik, Lochem, it says in the Pasik, who levada yas lochem. Yom Tov, you're allowed to do things for yourself. Is lochem only things for yourself? But loy levoyim, not things for the Abishta. So you cannot bring your oil of Sriya. Amla Basil of Allah Kvanem, I don't know what's in the Pasik, la Hashem, it says, Vachag Goisim, Oise Chag, la Hashem, also do those things that are necessary for Hashem. Call the la Hashem. Ah, you came at Hamla lochem. So why does it say lochem according to him? See, his mother, lochem, we learned from here a very important halacha. As we learn tomorrow, lochem v'loy lekusim. On Yom Tov, we allow you to cook food, but you're not allowed to cook food for goyim. 
as we'll discuss tomorrow, you're not allowed to invite Goyim. Actually, we won't discuss tomorrow because we're Yom Tov. You're not allowed to invite Goyim to your, to your house for Yom Tov because you might cook extra for them. And said, Lochem, only for you, not for Goyim. Lochem, for you, will the club, not for your animals. Abishol, Abishol has this discussion, is so very similar, but slightly different. Abishol, I'm not sure, that the discussion went as follows. Same idea of Kawachim, it goes as follows. <clears throat> this is what he'll say to Shammah. On Shabbos, when your stove is shut down, Kira is where you can have put two parts on it. And yet, Kira Sabah Psucha, the old base bech is open, you bring Kabonas there. When your stove is wide open, you can cook as much as you want. Shouldn't also the stove of your master be open? Otherwise, the Bezbech should be functioning, you should be able to bring all your Kabonas. So very similar vein as the previous Kabochema, but just he, he, he talks about your private things. Um, <clears throat> and then he said also logically, it's, it's not right. Your table should be full of beautiful, fresh food. And the table of your master should be empty. Why is Abba Shon Tanakam arguing um, that Abba Shon doesn't have the Shammai coming back with a rejoinder and saying, Hey, the Dodim and the Dovas will prove it that in the first in the first price it says the Dodim will prove it. You can eat, you're allowed to eat your own food, but you cannot bring Dodim and even though you're allowed to eat it. And um, and Abba Shaul doesn't have that comment. What's going on here? The Mars, they're arguing exactly what we just discussed before the argument as to whether Beis Hill, Beis Hill agrees that you can have the Dodim and Dovas or not. In the first price, the Beis Hill holds you cannot. Bring your own daughter to Dabbas. So Bishama used that against Basil. But the second brass, Abba Sholho, like the opinion that says that the daughter of Dabbas, you are allowed to bring a Yom to according to Basil. So Bishama can't use it against Basil. Marasov, the daughter of Dabbas, craving the Yom to, you do bring a Yom to, but Marasov, I ain't craving the Yom to, you're bringing a Yom to. Amr was a Huna. The Divri Aimer, the one, the opinion that says that in the Dorim Vinadabas, even according to Basil, ain't craving the Yom to, we do not bring the daughter of Dabbas and Yom to. Don't think don't learn the pshat is because it says the pasuk Hashem means that everything that has to do with the Ebeshi Yilad bring including the Dorna Dabbas and the only reason but Rabbanon who the Gazi book is it's only the Rabbanon who say look we don't want you to bring the Dorna Dabbas on Yom for a simple reason that that you know that that opinion that says that Hill says don't bring the Dorna Dabbas maybe it's only the Rabbanon and that is Gzei B'Shem Yishu was scared that people will make promises for Rabbanus and let the animal roam around the house until Yom uh, and thinking that you know I'll bring it Yom and I'll have uh, you know I'll kill two birds with one stone I'll do my 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 carbon adob, and meanwhile I'll use it for my carbon simcha. Remember, any any meat of a carbon is going off a simcha. The, the problem is what happens that he will he'll, he'll just let it hang around. And what happens? He forgets to bring with him to 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 make some uh, English. Then it'll be about to acher or other problems can happen. Don't learn that shot. Even mahatoida, you're not allowed to bring an adodim and a dover on on um, on Yom You're not allowed to bring an adodim and a dover on Yom Tov. I the puzzle Hashem is talking about only a carbon oiler ria. Uh, which is like Chagiga, but that's it. Not your own voluntary ones. I'll prove it to you. When it comes to two loaves of bread, which is on Shavuos, which is mandatory only on Shavuos, you cannot bring it before then. So there's no, it's not shy to say, oh, we don't want you to bring it on Yom Tov because Shema Yishe. There's no Shema Yishe. It's only, only belongs on Yom Tov. The Chavis Ayyem Ninu, they do only on Shavuos, and you have a leg of Misha Misha, therefore it's not, it's not it's impossible to make this Gzeda that, no, we don't want you to do it on Yom Tov Shavuos because you might let it hang around. It's only do on Yom Tov Shavuos. And you have any Doichel Shavuos, and you now bring on Shavuos, you have to bake it before. So what does that prove? So that proves the reason is Maha you cannot do it, um, you cannot do it on Yom Tov because Lashem is referring to only Karma Chagiga, which is mandatory, or Hashem, or Karma Oila, which is similar. Says the Gemara further. Um, what about the Bible? According to the opinion that says that, that Basil also agrees you cannot bring the Dorim and Dovis, your voluntary Kabbalah, so Yamta. What happened? You did. Ava Vishachi. When had you did? My, what's it in then? It didn't. Can you eat the meat? What do you do? You shouldn't have done it, but you did it. Rav Amar Rav says he proceed Zoidik as Saddam. He said like this. He said you proceed to sprinkle the blood on the Mizbech, on in order, once, you, once you're ready, shechted it. We continue with the carbon. You, you spray the blood in order to enable one to eat the meat. 
In other words, if the meat is still available, so therefore you're entitled to, to Zaydik. The only way you can eat the meat for the carbon is if you sprinkle the blood on his back. So therefore the sprinkling is necessary for Yom Tov in order to be able to eat from this carbon. And that allows you to sprinkle and continue with the carbon. You know, you should have done it. But if, let's say, there's no meat left, then you cannot sprinkle the blood because on what basis are you sprinkling the blood and if it's not Zaydik Yom Tov anymore because you cannot eat the meat. Ah, you're going to put the fats on the mezbech, and then for, for that, you sprinkle bring the blood, but that is no benefit to the person, and therefore you can't do it. And Abba Barabun Amar, Abba Barabun said, no, I don't care if there's meat for you, as long as something from the mezbech. Zoyedek is Adam, I'm not acting with You can sprinkle the blood in order to be able to enable you to put the fats on the mezbech later that night, and that's good enough. We don't care if you have any meat to eat yourself or not. My benai, iki benai. What happened? Nitma basa. The meat became tame. Oisha avad. Oh, you lost it. So there's no meat. Lirava konter avad. The only het for you to sprinkle the blood is because it's it's negate lachem because you can have some of the meat. Loizodik. In this case, you won't sprinkle the blood. But lirava ravuna zodik. You will sprinkle the blood. Mace will ask you a question. It says. Kif say at says the sheep that go on shvos together with the loaves of two loaves of bread we just discussed a minute ago. It says you bring a goat and you bring two, well, it was a chattas and you bring two sheep and so on. We learned in the Mara's Wachim that if you shecht an animal, and you can still eat the meat and everything else, but you have not fulfilled your mitzvah, whatever uh, carbon you were meant to bring. If you didn't have the right kavan, it's the right uh, intention in mind. Um, so, no, because you have to shecht it thinking that these are shlamim for the whole community. Let's say you shecht it by mistake for an oila. He had the wrong thoughts in mind. Oi, she shocked and you shechted it, being leaf nays manan before shavuos, and and you did set them aside for shavuos. But you said you said you shechted before shavuos, or being la achas man after shavuos. The din is hadam yizik. You sprinkle the blood, the habasa yechul, and because the law is the animal is still kosher, that means the meat is still eaten as a carbon. Just you haven't fulfilled your your obligation, whatever the obligation was meant to be. Um. So therefore, you could continue doing it, and then it says the im hoys the Shabbos. But if it was Shabbos like Yisur, you shouldn't uh, sprinkle the blood because Shabbos you can't eat the meat and you can't roast or anything else, and you won't eat it. So you now sprinkle the blood. The im zorak if you did, but I'm asking hurtze. Uh, then is amanas lahakte imun leedit. And if you sprinkle the blood, um, and, and um, it, it's it's all right, um, it's all right, um, and and because you had in mind the fats. So, so, so it, had, it did something, it achieved something, had in mind the fats. But you obviously cannot do Shabbat by day. It seemed to me only in Zorak the Ebed. If you didn't listen, didn't ask, and you just did it. In, then it's all right. But the Chatchila, you shouldn't sprinkle the blood if it's just for the fats. Because on Shabbos, you cannot eat, eat, cook the meat. So don't sprinkle the blood. But if you did, it's, still, it's all right because you can bring the fats up that night. Now, you sprinkle the blood only if you can eat from the meat. That's understood. It makes sense. Um, we don't care about the meat, or we care about the fats. The fact is that you sprinkle the blood for the fats. So why only be the ever? Kash, it's a problem. Answer the you're right. Kash, we have a problem from this price. Or you say, I can argue Shabbos is different than Yomtev. Shiny Shavuz, Shabbos is just Yomtev. Remember, sprinkling the blood is only a Shavuz, only Mid Rabban. And therefore, on Shabbos, we are stricter than on Yom Tov. On Yom Tov, we are, we are going to let you, um, and on Shabbos, we're not going to let you, on Yom Tov, we're going to let you sprinkle the blood, even though there's no meat, as long as you're doing it for the fats that you're going to do later. But on Shabbos, we're not going to, because you're not doing anything on Shabbos for tonight. We're not going to let you do that, because the, the Mukta is stricter on Shabbos than Yom Tov. At least the Shavuos of Shabbos. Even though in the beginning of the Sechta, we said that Yom Tov is stricter than Shabbos. Here he's saying that Shabbos is stricter than Yom Tov. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll meet.